fish in the river, people. Oh, yeah. Oh, big fish. There we go. Oh, that's a boxer. Big seven and single. Another fish. Double. Double. Ah. That one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there you go, sir. That's the kind of hey, what's up, guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here, and today we're back out with the man himself, Andy Cooch Kachia. Right here on the river, baby. Another beautiful, toasty day, just like last time, except it's really not pouring on us. We don't have the rain suits. We're like our last shape. intro. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting here getting drenched on the whole time. Well, of course, you know, some days that's not a bad thing. What do you think we're going to be doing today, Andy? Fishing for the elusive red ear? Yeah, that might be our best <laughs> bet. But, uh, no, you know, we got a winter transition, and it is. It's winter transition. Even though we've had the warming coming on here, everybody's getting excited about fish starting to move up shallow. Um, you know, they're just moving out of, tra uh, out of, out of their winter stuff. So and very similar to our last deal, but the interesting part is for this time, is it was real warm a couple of weeks headed into this week and then all of a sudden we had we got hit with a storm a big storm and a real cooling trend all of a sudden so the different thing is those fish were lining up for that transition time just like last time but now they could be backing off so we're gonna have to do a lot of running and gunning right yeah and what happened you know last year we caught it when they were just coming up this yeah. year they come up three four weeks ago when we had that warmer right. trend and now what's happening, you know, with those temperature drops, and that Florida doesn't like that temperature drop. <laughs> Florida stream bass. They're coming up and they're going down. They're coming up and they're going down, and they're up in some areas, and they're yeah. not in the other. It's real consistent. Today, we're going we're gonna to focus on some shallow and, and deeper transition stuff, and we're going to hit them hard and goo. Go, hit them hard and find those active fish today. So today, it's going to be about breaking down a pattern, how to figure out what phase these fish are in. Let's get out there and catch some, man. Let's go do it, man. Figure out where these fish are moving in and go get us a couple. Always a pleasure, man. Let's go get them. And that's what we're going to be fishing for up shallow. Will, will be those active, aggressive fish. You know, you got the active, the neutral, and the negative. And we got a lot of fish in that negative mode yeah, still. The but there is that group of fish that are up shallow and active. And, you know, you just got to pound the bank, pound the bank until you find one. Yeah, as you can see, today's tide, we got one of those to beep tides We've got a high tide in the morning we got a low tide in the afternoon mid mid afternoon and then a high tide um this normally would be a really good tide to fish because you got a lot of water movement but when when you got these winter fish you know their metabolism is still very low due to the cold water so a lot of water movement is not always the greatest thing this time of year um, I think we'll probably stay out of the deeper heavy current areas where they're transitioning up and try and focus on areas where we're on what we call the inside, where we're in areas where we don't have a lot of current and uh, we can find those fish in that four to eight foot zone. So the tide this time of year, I don't normally let it dictate it, but this particular tide where we have two highs and a low in the middle is one where there's a lot of water movement. We got to plan our day out accordingly. Oh, that's a good one. Right up against the tuis. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's there you go, sir. That's the kind of fish we come up in the shallows looking for right there. Big fat port meat, six pounder. Look at the belly. She getting ready. Ooh, but those aren't yeah. eggs, folks. Those aren't eggs. She's up there chewing on split tail shiners and crawdads. See how they're starting to get red? Oh, yeah. They just started doing it this week. They're getting red. They're up in there rooting out them craws. Just, oh, I threw that thing in there and she thumped it right away. I seen you swing. I didn't see that rod budge. I said, oh, there we go. That's a beauty nice. right there. Big girl. Those get her what started we're off for. with. These are the kind of fish, you know, we're catching out here when we get a good one throwing that big old jig. Oh, yeah. Nice start to the day. Beautiful fish. See that fish? Now, there's another thing. You see that tail right there? A lot of guys are going to see that mm -hmm. and go, you know what? That These fish are on beds. They're fanning. Their tails are worn. Yeah, just but when you see years. the top of the tail worn, that fish has been sitting up underneath a ledge been sitting up beneath the ledge just doing this just 
staying in place mm -hmm. and it wears the top of the tails off. So when you see a fish that's got the top of the tail, you know that's a river suspended fish that's moved up. Okay. And not the bottom of the tails, that's the way they spawn. They don't right. spawn like that. Yeah, you'll this. see it all bloodied right. up down here. Guys yeah. don't understand that. But that's a that's a fish that probably come through the opening, roamed around, just roaming in and out. He either came through the opening here or the big opening there into this north I'm pole. amped because that fish came up shallow. That fish All came right. out of two foot of water. I'm throwing the jig now. <laughs> two foot of water. Well, you know, we were trying outside. We'll put her in a box. Just so yeah. see what happens here. Um, Hang with us, guys. We'll be right back. Hey sportsmen, have you ever wanted an all-in-one cleaning tool for small game or fish? Well look no further, the Sportsman Field Tool offers an all-in-one stainless steel construction with all the bells and whistles. From a fillet knife, snip, snub knife, gut rake, and a scaler in its indestructible case, you really can't go wrong. Check your local retailers or visit sportsmanfieldtool.com. Attention Northern California anglers, have you been to boat country in Escalon? With one of the largest selections of welded aluminum fishing boats from Weld Craft Low and Hughes Craft, chances are they've got the right fishing boat for you. And did I mention they have a full service center to take care of all your boating, repair, and maintenance needs? If you're a boat owner or just looking to become one, you owe it to yourself to check these guys out. Visit BoatCountryUSA.com or stop on by. I'll see you there. Ever try pulling a planer board next to your boat when trolling or fishing from a swift current bank? If not, you're missing out on one of the most phenomenal fish catching machines on the market today. With Yellowbird planer boards pulling your lines perpendicular to your boat, you can't help but catch more fish. Find out more by visiting www.yellowbirdproducts.com. Did you know that Beeline makes specialized lines for all your fishing needs? From the super strong abrasive resistant CXX or the low stretch super stealthy CX Premium, or maybe you're looking for invisibility or super bite detection with Beeline's 100% fluorocarbon. No matter what your needs, Beeline's got it covered. To find out more, visit Beeline.com. Beeline, baby. Little guy, little guy. There's my first giant in the morning. Mm -hmm. Big old wacky fish. See? Hey, keeper. Maybe. When you're following the jig, generally, I mean, if, if you're pitching a jig into spots, nah, it's not a keeper. He is gold, though. You know, Andy's pitching the jig up front. He's got a big old leech on his tongue. Check that out. See that leech, that leech lice sort of deal there on his tongue. The little guys, Andy was saying a lot of the little guys out here get those. But what I was saying is, I got Andy throwing the big presentation, the jig in there, and I'm following him up with this wacky rig Senko right here. This new little Senko holder right here with the hooks, pretty cool. Uh, Realfishbait.com, you can get these guys. You can run the hook right through them, just a little O-ring, and the, just above it right here lines up so your hook can go through. Pretty cool little system. And I'm using that real stout little uh, one-aught Trocar live bait hook. It's the saltwater version. It's actually like a four to six X strength hook. Really, really stout and a tiny hook to where I can come through a lot of this debris quite easy here with that single hook to where I'm getting in there, I'm hanging up a lot of stuff. When I pop it free, I know more than likely there's no grass on it, which gives me the confidence to keep fishing it. Another fish on the jig. Oh yeah. Solid three, close to four. Yeah, three pounds. Nice fish. All right. Well, that one was about three or four feet away from them tulies. Nice. You can see, you know, in this dirty water. See, again, look at the red mouth. They're in there rooting crawdads. That's why I'm throwing that big old jig. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna pick the jig up. They're a little lighter color. This one's got a little more color than that other ones. I, I mentioned it started getting lighter in here, but. I think there's more of that grass. That lighter color. In here, so they're a little darker. <laughs> means that fish just came up. A lot of the time when they get real dark, that means they're buried in the grass or they're yeah. up shallow. Yeah, so. you can t I love going to the weigh-ins. If I'm kind of struggling, don't have a clue where they're at, <laughs> I go to the weigh-ins. You know, and if those fish are real black with white bellies, you know they're in the clear water and the grass catching mm -hmm. them. If, they're, if they got the orange bottom and they're real black, they're in one of two places. Eight or? Yeah, yeah they're, they're around the tannic water. They're sitting belly to the mud right on the bottom. But, you know, these fish are moving around. I, don't know. I think that was from my jig. But, yeah, another solid fish. Nice fish. Those are the kinds we like to catch this time of year. At least this one's a keeper. Maybe. I think he's 13 inches. Yes, we're, we're sitting in here in another one of those little areas where 
We're out in a track, big flooded pond. We're on the inside where these fish are migrating. Both from out in the middle of the track, the resident fish and those fish that live on the outside. And we got real dirty water in here. We got about three, four foot of water on these tules. And what we're doing is we're focusing on the insides, the highways that these fish are using as they're traveling into spawning areas. And the key thing with this particular corner is you've got not only the main openings, but you've got all these breaks where those fish can come through on a high tide and they'll just roll up through. And we're sitting on the outer edges because as the tide's falling, any of the fish that are up and inside are pulling out. And what we're doing is we're coming out here flipping that big jig and we're target fishing anything that resembles a point. And, and, and a lot of times guys get confused and don't understand points, but these tule patches You've got all these little target zones where they form little points, form little points. You've got the little bays, you got a point on each side of the opening. And those fish will set up right on in the inside of those points. And we just, we're just putting that jig, making a lot of pitches and flips up in there, hopping it once or twice, looking for the aggressive fish. When you get a long tule point like this one, throw it back up in the back and just work that thing all the way out to the end of the point. Sometimes you'll get bit right on the edge right away. Other times you'll get it, most of the time, you're going to get it right when it gets out to the end of that point. So what Andy and I are doing now as the tide's dropping out on us. So instead of sitting up on that flat where it was, you know, three and four feet that goes, you know, 100, 200 feet up to the bank, instead, now that it's dropping out, we're finding these Tule Islands like this, but we're on the main rivers out there, but we're fishing on the inside of it here because these fish are transitioning around the mouths of these islands, coming in and starting to look around these flats, looking for those spawning areas, starting to get in there. So what we're doing as the tide's dropping out now, instead of fishing further up on those flats because it was high tide where it was okay and it gave those fish time to get up there, now we're sitting in deeper water. This is 12 foot that we're sitting in right here, 12 feet deep. So you can see the Tule's right here, what? 10, 15 feet max. What that makes it really easy for those fish to do is drop up and down this ledge. So instead of those bigger, wider flats where as soon as they feel that tide starting to drop out, they're gonna get out of there a whole lot faster than they would here. A lot of the time this stuff's real deep, we can still fish down this ledge right here and find those fish that are transitioning back down with that tide. Yeah, and the other, the other thing too is that, like you mentioned, you know, these Floridas, they don't, this time of year, their metabolism still real low. They're not moving a whole lot. And it's a lot easier for them to move vertically 10 feet versus going horizontally 200 yards. Exactly. And again, you get in these flooded islands, you got a lot of those resident fish, but you got those transition fish that are moving out of the deep channels. Here, they're gonna show up a lot sooner on these kind of places on these islands where they're coming out of that river channel and they immediately find that cover and they just kind of slide right in and they're going oh we got 10 12 foot of water and then it's that straight vertical move up into the feeding zones so we've already gotten bit a couple times in here we broke off a big one and uh, we're just going to keep plugging away as this tide falls and stay in this little deeper zone and see what we can do to find a big one big fish big one. Stout one. Ooh, look how sharp those teeth are. I figured they'd be ground down by now. Look at that. Woo! Pretty five pounder. Oh, yeah. Thumped it. Hang with us, guys. We'll be right back. Been thinking about trying out kayak fishing or already into it and just want some sick upgrades for your rig? It's time to check out the Headwaters Kayak Shop. Come pick the brains of their knowledgeable staff and make sure to ask about their awesome demo program to find the right kayak for you. Or stop in and rent one with Lodi Lake right down the street. The Headwaters Kayak Shop fits all your yakking needs. Tell them if sent you. Did you ever wish for an RC boat when you were a kid? And do you have a passion for fishing? Well, guess what? It's time to do them both at the same time. With RCFishingWorld.com's RC Fishing Pole, it's time to be a kid again. So visit www 
rcfishingworld.com today. When that tide falls out, especially in the spring and summer, mm -hmm. where the water's a lot clearer and you can see the weed line, now, when that tide falls, you can see that weed line down there and you can see the contour. And it was like we talked about the points within points of those tules earlier. You see the same exact thing in those tules. You'll see, or in the grass, you'll see the points of the caves that the grass forms. And those bass utilize those as points as well as they do a hard bottom point on a lake or something, anywhere else on this river. That grass is, you know, understanding how those fish reposition themselves in and out of that grass is, is really huge. We love the low tide here. Those of us that fish this river all the time, mm -hmm. we love the low tide because it exposes where they're at. So instead of us blind casting in the big, thick, shallow patches of tuis where you can't see it, that tide falls out. Now you get to see all those places and now your pitches become higher percentage bait placement. So you get that bait in there, each time you're throwing that bait, it's in a high percentage area versus blind casting where you can't see those contour changes in the grass. Yeah. You know, you got the physical stuff that you can visibly see up on the bank, such as the tulies and the rocks, but there's that underwater world down there and that low tide really gives the angler the advantage if you, you know, understand that and utilize it. What we got going on here um, with this jig is this is our uh, TNT's Cooch's Wada Bomb. Basically, it's our half ounce jig. We put a little bigger hook on it. This is a six aught hook on this one. Put a little rattle up inside. We got this dirty water. Give it a little something. And I used a little spacer, a little Yamamoto 129 grub. It's purple grub with black and blue flake in it. And then because of the length of the skirt, this particular jig has eight inches of rubber, so it's about a four inch base. We're putting a great big old Big Daddy Uncle Josh piece of pork on there, black and blue, real bright blue, slows down the fall of the bait, but more importantly, it's these big old tails, when that thing's in the water, they just get to undulating and waving. These fish just can't handle it, they gotta eat it. It's got a nice uh, 40 strand weed guard on it and uh, it's real good bait out here this time of year. We've been fishing the smaller jigs and not getting near as many bites and uh, about three four weeks ago when we went to that bigger jig, that bigger piece of pork, our bites, our bites started improving tremendously by, you can see by the last two big fish that we've caught out here this morning. There's one of them little buck sinkle fish. So we've kind of changed. We're out here in a marina where we're off a main channel. Just in the grass beds on that low tide. There's Keep a fish. There's oh, one. big fish. There we go. That's on that wacky rig. That's a good one, man. Maybe three. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, well, that's a boxer. I don't think I can swing this on that low tide. Oh. Yeah. There you got go. it. Oh yeah. Good. Oh, hey, hey. Show the camera. <laughs> I forgot we got a camera going, huh? This ain't about you and me. I got in the zone all of a sudden. There we go. Let's put her in the box. Nice solid three pounder. So I got that fish on the uh, basically the wacky rig again with that little uh, little rubber thing there where you can stick the hook and the uh, and the Cinco back through. That's the uh, real fish bait products.com ho over there um, I'm actually running that to 20 pound fluorocarbon right here and I have roughly about two and a half three foot leader going up to 50 pound braid this is the new P line braid right here this is the X braid this stuff's really cool uh, most braid is very limp this braid actually has a little bit of line memory to it and the shock strengths a little bit better um, with that little line memory a lot of the time you're not gonna get the slippage with the braid and you don't get that tip wrap around the end of your rod a lot of the time if you've been fishing braid you go to cast you realize all of a sudden there's a knot around the tip of your rod the problem with that is the limpness of the braid so P line came out with that new X braid to try to address that issue so far so good haven't had it happen to me today there we go it's fighting 
looking for a little dude though. My goodness. I mean, that rounds out a nice limit right there. See, and it's like that's what I told us early, you know, earlier. We got to keep moving around. As the tides fall out, we're bouncing around. We're not staying in one area for too long. Bouncing around, looking, and we found a pretty good group of fish right here on the back side of this little island and uh, off the main channel where these fish are moving up. And, you know, if you just... If you sit there and keep doing the same old thing this time of year with the same old negative results, that's what's going to happen is you're not going to catch fish. You got to keep moving around and try different things and you know we've done that. We're on about our fifth spot today already. It's a little afternoon and you know we're catching fish as we go along and uh, found us a little honey hole right here. Yeah, quit being patient. Yeah, don't be patient. Patience is for lakes. Hot to trot they are. <laughs> I love how limber of a rod you're using. <laughs> well, this is one of my old flippers. I normally use this for that big seven inch Senko. Another fish, <laughs> double. Double. Yeah, there the we go. It oh, you, it looks like yours beat me. You know, I don't know what it is, but every time Andy and I tend to have doubles, his is just always just a half pound bigger than bigger. mine. The identical worm. Same worm. You're fishing it wacky. I'm fishing wacky. I'm He's fishing Texas, Texas rigging. rigging it. Both weightless. Get out of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Cuber. yeah. I clearly lost that one. That would have put us over 20. That last double, though, I think I got you on the last double you, for the first time. Yeah, that was a smoke. But there. so far, I think it's like 75% you win the double. You notice how as we come around this island. When we talked earlier about fish being grouped up. Every time we've caught one, it's been bang, bang. Yeah, bang, bang. Yeah. Bang, and bang. That's the thing. A lot of people forget that in the wintertime, the fish school up. You know, where you catch little ones, you can also catch big ones. You know, just like when I was out with Ish doing the winter episode, and same with Andy, it's like when you start getting hit, slow down because this is still early, early spring. These fish aren't separating to do their whole spawning deal yet they're still grouped up you oh, find them grouped up slow down they're still in winter they're not even yeah. thinking about spring don't use that yeah. word in this yeah. episode you confuse the viewers it's not, this hey, is still winter fishing this is winter transition you know as you could you can see by this uh these blazing degrees. cold conditions and uh super it, overcast and rainy out here on us right now feels nice in spring to us but as far as those bass are concerned 58 57 still Still winter time. Yeah, I. What what time would you say? Would you call it official pre-spawn? When the morning temps 58, 59, official for two well, weeks straight. I call it official pre-spawn when you get into an area where you you've see got them? grass beds <laughs> and you can see fish, and you pull into an area like this and you catch five or six four pounders and a seven and an eight. Then that's they're all that, staging that's outside the grass and there's little bucks running around. That's pre-spawn spring. Yeah. But until then, it's just winter and transition. It is. It's still, they're transitioning out of winter. The water temperature's warming up. They're on the move. They're feeding heavily when they decide to feed. And that's the key again, as I keep repeating, by, you know, moving around and not staying in one one place for too long. See, gonna keep moving and... you could tell it's still winter time because I'm wearing my boots today. I'm wearing boots. I don't often wear boots. I normally just go sandals right there. Um, but today I wore my boots. I well, thought about taking my boots off because I kept catching those small fish, but I got to put that one big one in the boat, so I'm still keeping my boots on. Yeah, well, I finally got to where I'm just wearing one pair of wool socks now. One pair of wool socks. And and not my wool socks and my seal skins. <laughs> not your seal skins? <laughs> That's my wintertime fishing. When it, when it gets to where I can't handle wearing the seal skins, then I'm going uh, My pop's over there. He's wearing penguin skins. Rare you, penguins, though. Rare we penguins. actually... Uh, we skin those strictly for his socks. Is that why I keep finding rocks in the boat? He's looking for a mate. <laughs> hey, just real quick, guys. I want to give a big shout out to Gene and the guys over at the Hook, Line, and Sinker in Oakley, California for taking care of us. We were out. We had a freak accident in the chase boat. We snapped the trolling motor and shaft in half when hooking a dock cleat. Uh, Gene and the guys were nice enough to get us all fixed up. They repaired it, got us back on the water in no time. I just want to say it is greatly appreciated. If you guys are in the area, make sure to stop by and say hello. That's 3100 Main Street in Oakley, California, 94561. You can give them a call at 
925-625-2441. Thanks, Gene. So Andy and I just made a pass through here. Um, you know, we we're casting two that roughly thrown up into four, bringing it down to about eight. Um, now we're positioning the boat in shallower water, coming back, casting to about 12 and bringing it into about six. Uh, we both got fish to hook up that just came unpegged. Um, I just got hit again, but I just missed the fish. Uh, but this is a pass we're remaking to find and fish the same area where we we're getting bites. We're just giving them an entirely new look by changing our angle, uh, throwing out to where our boat was positioned because we caught a couple of fish right at the boat. So that's a key indicator that we probably missed a lot of fish under the boat or deeper. Yeah, and the other thing about that is that, you know, when we were sitting on the outside throwing up, we never got bit up here in the shallows. Not when all of our fish came on the outside. So being winter, the fish are going to be a little deeper, the tide's falling out. We can effectively put the boat up in the shallow grass. We can slow our movement down. We're not getting blown and move around and be able to throw out and work uphill and not have to worry about um, you know, spooking fish that are right underneath us. Yeah, you can get into that shallow water. Well, they don't detect you're the boat. Catching fish up in the shallows, don't, you don't, don't want park to there. put your boat up in there and fish inside out. <laughs> Unless you're catching ten pounders out there and one pounders up here, then you know you just common sense to tell you you're going to stay stay out on them. But uh, we didn't. We never got bit up inside. It's only about a foot and a half, two foot of water here behind us, where we've got seven to twelve out in front coming up, and that's what those fish are doing. They're out the deeper water and they're coming up to the grass edge and we're just coming up behind them and bringing it right to them from here and mm -hmm. comfortably sit and do this. And That's where they've been all winter, you know, down in that deeper got grass out extreme there. Extreme windy days, you get some protection from the west winds or if it's a north wind sitting on the back side of the two, you just tuck right up in and fish out and fish in. You don't always have to, just because you're in a boat, be fishing deep and then casting shallow and fishing out. Here on this river, you can certainly get up inside and, uh, yeah, I find that more common in the middle of the work. summer and the winter too, that I'm, I find the boat to be positioned shallow and fishing deeper. Strictly because in the summer those fish get deeper, the winter those fish are deeper. So I, I see so many guys in the summertime that can't put a fish in the boat, a, a quality fish in the boat, that's because they're still fishing shallow and unless you're punching or fishing boat docks or something like that, something with heavy cover or fishing deeper for that matter, right. then you know your boat should be positioned shallow and you should be focusing your target deep. <laughs> See my line swim out to the left. Another chick fish. Chunker. Oh yeah. He's stout too. Look at there, little porker. Think that fish is up in there feeding? Oh yeah. You got a fat little belly. Maybe not. I think that made it. it. Might be close to three. Two and three quarter. Pretty good fish. That might that might have made our 20 pound sack right there. Should we put them in the box just to weigh it and make sure? We'll check at the end. There we go. We'll see if we can call this guy out. I need my jig fish. Where's my jig fish? There we go for another awesome trip out here with Andy Kachia. Hopefully you guys got some great tips. We're going to weigh this out, see what it's at. Andy, what's your guess? Well, we got two threes there. Two threes there. We got a six here. I think this one. We got a five plus there. Yep. We'll just say five, we'll say six. So that's what, six, and this 12, 17, that's a four, 21 pounds. 21 pounds, baby. Give or take. Right out there, let's release these big girls. Look at that donkey. Beautiful yeah. fish. Informativefisherman.com, guys. Come Check on, it join out. us on the Delta. Winter yep. fishing, baby. Call Jigga up pigs. Andy right here. Call the number at the bottom of the screen. Andy will put you on fish just like these guys. Adios. Yeah. Ha, 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 ha.